Hey everyone, Mirai here. And in this video, I'm sort of kind of feeling a request from the Dual Dash Boxing Forums showing how I approach the two new revamped versions of Scarlet Halls and Scarlet Monastery. Now this video is just going to cover the encounters as well as some of the other areas of each instance where I felt it was necessary, but this isn't a definitive guide on how to approach each encounter step by step. And there could very well be different ways to go about this depending on your team composition. However, if you want to see full runs of either instance, then you can find those links in the description of this video. So just some things to cover real quick. First, I won't be doing the heroic version of the instance because I don't currently have a team at level 90. So instead, I'll be doing the level 30 version of it. There isn't a big difference between the two besides the obvious fact that the dungeon is scaled down and I have less class abilities available to me. Obviously, some of the mechanics will be detuned as well, but as far as I know, all of the important ones are there except for two, and I'll do my best to talk about these things where applicable. Second, my team is experience locked at level 30. I'm not wearing a single piece of heirloom gear minus the guild tabard, and I'm not wearing anything purchased from the auction house. But I am, for the most part, decked out in best in slot blue gear from both of these instances, which gives me an average item level of about 30. However, some of the trash and bosses in these instances are still a few levels above my own, so these are a challenge regardless. Third, I'm running a team of five, count them, five paladins, which means I have three melee DPS characters. Not only does this, in my opinion, add to the difficulty of some encounters, but it should be obvious that if you're running a different composition of classes, that your approach to a certain encounter will likely vary. And finally, I am using my own custom UI and IS Boxer setup. A good, flexible setup goes a long way when attempting to tackle more difficult encounters. And if yours is currently lacking, especially in the healing department, then you may have trouble clearing content. That's everything I had to say, so let's get this started. In Scarlet Halls, the first mini-boss that you're going to encounter is Commander Linden, and I label him as a mini-boss because he's a named elite who shares his loot table with trash mobs, so he doesn't drop anything of use. Now, there are a few ways to cheese this encounter and avoid its mechanics, but I personally never try to rely on such methods because they may end up being fixed without warning, and if that happens, you're back to square one trying to figure out how to approach the encounter all over again. So why not just try to approach it the right way from the start? The way that this encounter works is you need to make your way across this open area, but the archers on the other side shoot arrows which constantly push you back, and the only way to ensure that you won't get pushed back is to grab one of these three archery targets and carry it to the other side using it as a shield from the arrows. The party member or members who carry a shield will not only move at a reduced speed, they'll also be under constant AoE damage from fire on the ground. Did I mention the archers shoot flaming arrows? Well, they do. This means that, as a multi-boxer, if you lead with one character and have the rest of your team following behind you, your party will be taking AoE damage for the entire trip over to the other side. This is not ideal. So while I struggled with this encounter at first, I did eventually come up with an easy way to do this. First, I switch over to a DPS character, I strafe over to the archery target, grab it, and then I hit auto run. This character will now move in a straight line, and as long as you don't go running out in front of them, they should be the only character who takes any damage. Of course, you will need to throw some heals their way as they cross the courtyard, and I'd recommend not hitting your follow key during this time, or else that's going to screw everything up. But once the character carrying the shield arrives at the other side, the archers will put away their bows and pull out their swords, which begins the second phase of this fight. During this phase, you will want to take out the archers first because they continue to put a stacking debuff on whomever they're focused on, but they're pretty easy to dispose of. After that, Commander Linden is pretty much a pushover as long as you can keep your tank healed through the extra damage from the debuff. I will mention that my tank is about 3,000 health with the blue gear that she's wearing, which is probably about 1,000 to 1,200 more than you'd typically have at this point if you were just cruising through with a mixture of greens and blues. Again, no heirlooms. And I'll be honest, it was difficult to keep my tank alive through the entire fight when I first began running the instance. Of course, this all depends on your team composition, your gear, your setup, etc. Houndmaster Brawn is the second encounter in this instance, but he's the first real boss who drops any loot. I must say that this encounter is far from difficult on both heroic and non-heroic, and it's basically just a tank and spank. He will call out for his dogs to join in at different times throughout the fight, but as long as they're picked up by the tank, they can pretty much just be ignored. 
There is really not much else to say about this boss at all, except that when he reaches a certain percentage of health, his dogs will turn on him and finish him off for you. Arms Master Harlan is the second boss of this instance, and he really only has one ability to watch out for, Blades of Light, but more on that in just a moment. In addition to Blades of Light, Harlan also comes standard with a cleave attack, so face him away from the rest of your party to minimize damage. Not only that, he will periodically call for adds throughout the fight, but it's likely that you'll be able to ignore them as long as you can keep them focused on your tank and just heal through the damage. As for Blades of Light, in the non-heroic version of this encounter, it's likely that you won't even see it, but Harlan will eventually use it if you wait long enough. When he's about to use the ability, he'll first move to the same spot he was standing in when you entered his room. He'll then begin to spin in place, quickly becoming a fiery whirlwind of death, and will then make his way around the outer edge of the entire room at a fast pace. And while it's a bit more forgiving in the non-heroic encounter, getting caught up in this will almost certainly kill you. In fact, his adds can get caught up in this, and they will take damage. It's not really all that difficult to avoid, especially if you began the encounter at the topmost point where you entered the room. But just remember that whichever set of steps he uses to start his lap around the room, he'll use the other set of steps when coming back down. Before the final boss of the instance, there is a long room full of Scarlet Pupils and two Scarlet Scholars, and while the trash is particularly easy in this instance, I felt that mistakes could be made at this point. Like the Master Archers you fought during the Commander Linden encounter, the Scarlet Pupils will continue to apply a stacking debuff on whomever they're focused on. The only difference this time is that the Scarlet Scholars will periodically cast a channeled spell called Scarlet Protection, which reduces all damage taken by their allies within the shield by 99%. So if you can't kill the Scholars fast enough, you should be interrupting that channeled spell the moment you see it with a stun, an interrupt, or a silence. And because the debuff can likely stack indefinitely, it's almost certain death if you pull both groups in this room when you're undergeared or don't have the healing throughput to handle it. Flameweaver Kogler is the third and final boss of Scarlet Halls, and like Houndmaster Brawn, he really doesn't have a lot going on that puts your team in any real danger. However, there are times when he'll set a portion of the room on fire, which you won't want to stand in, but that is generally easy to avoid. You can even stand in the way of that cast and block the fireball, which in turn stops him from setting part of the room on fire in exchange for taking a bit of damage. The only time you're going to find yourself in danger is if you can't avoid his Dragon's Breath spell. When he's about to use Dragon's Breath, he'll teleport to the middle of the room, face the direction he's going to start off in, and then spew out fire in a frontal cone, slowly moving clockwise. If your team is scattered throughout the room and your characters find themselves in the unlucky position where they might get hit, then that should probably be the only time that you take damage from this spell, but otherwise, it's also generally easy to avoid. Overall, it's a pretty easy encounter as long as you pay attention to what's going on. Alright, moving right along across the hall to the Scarlet Monastery. Thalnos the Soul Renderer is the first encounter in the Scarlet Monastery, and he has a handful of tricks up his sleeve which makes this a semi-difficult encounter for multiboxers. First and foremost, he will continually cast Spirit Gale on whoever has aggro. This is the purple circle which you'll constantly see being cast on the ground. No one should be standing in this. The spell can be interrupted, but he casts it so often that you might run out of interrupts and sidestepping it is generally the route that I prefer. He also casts a spell that is similar to the Death Knight's Army of the Dead, which as you can see brings a handful of adds into the fight. Evict Soul is another spell that you'll see in both versions of the encounter, and it applies a dot to the character which it's cast upon, but it will also introduce another two adds into the fight. And finally, Thalnos has an ability called Summon Empowering Spirits, which will, yet again, bring another add into the fight. This one is much more dangerous though. You will typically only see this spell being cast in the heroic version of the encounter, but if you wait long enough, he will eventually cast it in the non-heroic version as well. 
Now, I didn't really talk about whether or not you should focus on killing some of the ads in this fight, but if you have the DPS to just burn him down, then I would recommend taking that route since when he dies, his ads die as well. But if you find that your DPS is lacking, then trying to focus on a few of the ads may be the safer route. Shortly after you defeat Thalnos and are making your way toward Brother Korloff, you will reach the courtyard of the monastery, and this place is packed with members from the Scar of the Crusade. My immediate recommendation is that you don't come running out here with guns blazing, because that's just going to get you killed. So you can see in my lower four windows that I've parked the rest of my team in the hallway back behind me, and I'm going to pull, and then line of sight, a handful of these guys back into that hallway. There is a single patrol that walks back and forth between each side, and I like to get him in the pull as well. It's not entirely necessary to do so, but it does make sneaking around the courtyard a bit easier. After that, you can run right up the middle and into the fountain, but I'd like to point out that if you have a pet class in your team and their pet is currently out, then jumping this barrier may end up pulling half of this courtyard. Pets don't usually like to jump barriers with their owners, and they tend to just walk around and meet you on the other side, which in this case ends up pulling numerous other trash packs in the area. So if you do have a pet, either dismiss it or just clear out a path in order to reach the upper area of the courtyard. Brother Korloff is the second boss of the Scarlet Monastery and, in my opinion, can be an absolute nightmare for melee teams if you're unfamiliar with the encounter. Now, I start off by positioning my healer at ranged because Korloff will use an AoE ability which favors ranged characters, and this allows for only one of my characters to take damage during that time. If your team has multiple ranged characters in it, then I'd recommend spreading them out pretty far from each other so that they're not all getting hit by the AoE at the same time. So what I've found works best for me is if I keep my melee characters fairly stationary during the fight. Because at a certain point in the fight, Brother Korloff will begin leaving a trail of fire wherever he walks, and it doesn't go away. So if my melee characters are running around like crazy or positioned incorrectly, then it's likely that they're going to be standing in this fire at some point, which is not good. Now, after Korloff uses his Firestorm Kick AoE ability, he will come back to the tank and shortly thereafter begin using Blazing Fists. This is a frontal cone ability which hurts a lot. You do not want this to be focused at anyone except the tank. If you're undergeared, then you can even back away from this ability, but just make sure that you don't go moving him around too much so that his trail of fire stays in one place. This boss has a pretty basic routine for when and where he's going to move, and thinking about positioning before starting the encounter helps tremendously. Commander Durand and High Inquisitor Whitemane are the final two bosses of the Scarlet Monastery, and it's no longer necessary to clear out the entire monastery like it was in the older version of this instance, but if you haven't cleared out all of the trash, then I would suggest parking your team in the corner near Durand so that you won't aggro anything you don't want to. So the first phase of the fight is incredibly simple, and you'll just need to DPS Durand down until he's dead. Just call me Captain Obvious. He does have a move called Flash of Steel, where he'll shift around to random players and inflict damage to them, but it shouldn't be anything to worry about in this first phase. Once you've killed Durand, High Inquisitor Whitemane will emerge from the room behind where the commander was originally standing. This begins phase two. During this phase, White Mane is an incredible pushover, and you should have no issues with the one ability that she uses, which is Holy Smite. However, when she reaches about 50% health, she will put the entire party to sleep and then resurrect Durand, which leads us into phase three. The moment that Durand is able to attack, he's going to use his Flash of Steel ability, which seems to inflict much more damage than it did in phase one. I have been one-shot by this ability before due to him landing all of his attacks on my tank, but even if someone's health isn't topped off at the start of this phase, they are in danger of dying. In this phase, I do recommend focusing all of your effort to drop White Mane as quickly as you can, because she will continue to use Power Word Shield and, during the heroic version of this encounter, also throw out heals and cast her Mass Resurrection spell. Mass Resurrection will resurrect all fallen members of the Scarlet Crusade within 100 yards. This is not something you want to happen unless you're going for the achievement on heroic difficulty. 
However, neither this spell nor the healing spell is used in the non-heroic version of the encounter. But if you do see Mass Resurrection being cast, it has a 10 second cast time and is able to be interrupted. Other than that, Commander Durand does the exact same thing he did in Phase 1. And if you just stay on top of healing, this encounter ends up being like most others throughout these two instances, Tank and Spank. Well, that's it for this video guide on the newly revamped Mists of Pandaria versions of both Scarlet Halls and Scarlet Monastery. Again, if you'd like to see the full level 30 speedruns of either of these instances, their links can be found in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Mirai out.